are you scared at all about like being caught given the fact that you are putting your face and your name into all of this? Definitely. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's not something I like to uh, think about too, too much. Hello, and welcome to the Trip Sitting Podcast, where we explore what it means to be human. This week, we have on Jeremy from Much More Supplements, and join us for just a silly old time. Uh, there was a lot of laughs, a lot of really good information, and a lot of fun had on this episode. And I don't want to spoil too much, so you're just going to have to listen to it. Uh, but just know that it was it was a really, really great episode, and I'm really excited to bring this to you. Before we start, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the podcast so you don't miss these episodes, and then also giving it a five-star rating, or whatever rating you choose, actually. If, if, if you hate it, you know, let me know. Uh, I probably prefer you let me know rather than giving it a one-star review. Um, but feel free to do that too. Um, but yeah, just, you know, I want to get in front of as many people as possible and help people. And I, I really do value feedback as well. Um, but also make sure that you're following trip sitting at trip sitting dot blog on Instagram and TikTok, uh, and subscribe to my trippy Monday newsletter. that talks about three things that caught my attention that happened over the past week that either I learned from, or, um, I think can help others too. So that is all of the promo before we start. So uh, without further ado, here is Jeremy. My intention is to uh, expand and strengthen the mycelium networking connection. Mm, I love that. Yes, sir. I like that, that beginning. I'm going to try and uh, get that into like my meetings and stuff. That's a good way to start a lot of stuff. Just get everyone on the same page, forget everything outside and focus on just this it really is i wish i wish when i worked in sales that i used to do that i think that my meetings would have gotten a lot better i don't think anyone would have been as up for it as they are when i do these podcasts but i mm-hmm. wish more people were just up to just taking the time to not feel like we're in like productivity mode like oh every minute matters i'm getting paid and all that yeah. shit like dude just take two fucking minutes to chill <laughs> the thing is it it uh it's not intuitive, but it actually does help productivity because you end up uh, just being better when you're focused. Um, yeah. And people don't realize that. They think you're wasting time, but it's like, no, this is going to make your time more useful. Yeah, I think for like for me, that was that was like a that was like a mental hurdle that I had to get over. Is and it, and it still is honestly. Like sometimes if I'm really busy and I know I have stuff to do, like I like I won't meditate at the beginning of the day. And then I'll go through the whole day, like just kind of off and like not ever fully being with what I'm trying to do because I'm thinking about the next task already and then the next task. But then when I take the, you know, during those days, if I take the time to actually just sit down and fucking breathe for 10 minutes at the beginning of the day, I'll do every single one of those tasks and I'll actually be involved in doing those tasks. Like I'll be fully present with it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I still struggle with it too, but it. Uh, I know that when you meditate, you're going to have a better day. When you sleep as many hours as you're supposed to, you're going to have a more productive day. Um, trying to like cut those corners ends up not really working. Mm-hmm. But then you could also microdose to help. And uh, yeah. that's something that you probably know a little bit more about than I do. Yeah. Um, so I, I wanted to ask you, when when did you first start microdosing? Um, I'd say the first time I microdosed was sometime during the beginning of the pandemic, maybe like June, July that year. Mm -hmm. Uh, Not really intentionally at all. Kind of uh, came across a bag of mushrooms. I don't even know how. Um, And I like to say like a lot of times mushrooms seem to find where they need to go. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like to think that and ended up uh, like nibbling a little or like putting a little in my smoothie feeling really good, had a lot of bad thoughts from COVID that um, didn't go away, but they were definitely a lot more uh, easy to rationalize and be like, oh, that's why I'm feeling that there's nothing I can do about it. I don't have to um, be all sad and miserable, this and that, or give up on stuff. Um, There's purpose and all that. So those effects happen pretty quickly. And then I guess I looked into it 
and realize that it's actually a thing, microdosing, um, that like a lot of people realize that it makes you feel better. It helps with a range of stuff. Um, so I started doing it a little bit intentionally, but I would just uh, take like a little bit of a mushroom, put it in a smoothie, and the dosing was always uh, inconsistent. And I don't mind tripping for sure, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes, uh, kind of like you said, like meditating in the beginning of the day, you're going to have a productive day. Microdosing, for me, I'm going to have a productive day, but if it's too much, um, I'll have a fun day still, but I might not, <laughs> I might not be productive. Um, it's probably not the safest to like, let's say drive also, or uh, I just, I personally maybe even can operate, but it's just uncomfortable for me uh, mm -hmm. and just, yeah, not really the most enjoyable day. So yeah. you don't want to make... put yourself in that situation if you don't have yeah. to. Yeah. And you never know what could happen. Uh, like mm -hmm. you think you're fine, but you never really know when, uh, when you hit past a certain threshold. I, so, I was going to say, have you, have you, like, what's your sort of threshold dose for once you kind of edge into the, okay, I might kind of be tripping a little bit now. I, I feel like I'm experienced now, yeah. uh, but I still don't know exactly because that, <laughs> It changes a lot, uh, and I, I guess that's part of why we're trying to at much more do a little bit more science and research and try and understand more of, because uh, there's all these different variants of Cubensis. Eventually, mm -hmm. I want to have um, stuff that's not even Cubensis, but there's variants of Cubensis that affect you differently. So point one of penis envy might be different than point one of Gandalf. So for me, sometimes I think my threshold is like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, but sometimes that uh, does m more than I anticipate still. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? So, but I, I'd say 0 0.4, I can still have a productive day. I like to like maybe meditate for a good hour in the morning if I do that. Yeah. And then um, I need some alone time and then I'll be good. Anything more than that is definitely uh, like I'm not trying to go out. So like point. 0.5, yeah, and higher uh, is definitely not going out. <laughs> yeah, What's it for I mean, you? I mean, for I again, like it, just same thing. It 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 really changes. Honestly, changes depending on the day too. And like, you yeah. know, if, if if I don't have ground up mushrooms too, like if I'm just eating like a little stem out of a bag or something, like I don't know how much psilocybin is in this little bit of the mushroom versus how much exactly. is in that other bit of the mushroom. So I could nibble on a little stem and be completely fine and then i could nibble on a little stem a couple days later but that stem had 10 times more psilocybin in it so all of a sudden like i'm kind of tripping a little bit yep and, and what it, yeah, you just... with if you have it with lemon like that will mm -hmm. uh make the effects more uh more perceptual so yeah, yeah. It depends on a lot yeah so there 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 are a lot of uh there are a lot of factors in it. And that's honestly why I like, I like the way that you do your products is because they're all weighed out to what I want them to be. And like, they're, they're, they're also stacked with other things. Like, you know, you put lion's mane, cordyceps, reishi, um, like all these other different things that you, you know, potentially have. So like you have a lot of options, which I like to be able to sort of experiment with all yeah. of those different options as well. And I think that that's really helpful. I agree. Cause it, uh, similar to what I was saying before is like uh, a point four would be a day like I'm going to meditate a lot. So I, I change up my dosage and the blends I'm taking and all of that. Uh, most days I'll take like one that's about 0. 0.125. That's like my go to. Yeah. But there's definitely days where I vary it up. I'll take a little bit less or a little bit more, um, which I a lot of the products that I make, I make it because it's something I like. So I like all the variations and uh, and being able to like pinpoint exactly how much I'm taking. Uh, all of the blends use penis envy, so that's pretty consistent. We have other stuff that has different uh, variants, but it's like if you're doing the blend, the dosing should be pretty consistent. Um, yeah, it still can depend a lot, but yeah, so I enjoy yeah. that. For anybody who may be listening to this, by the way, I don't want you to think that this is just one giant ad for much more because it's absolutely not. But what Sorry, I will say I is, I just like to talk about my stuff a lot. My no, 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 I'm, I'm going to be the one that's just going to be bringing this up all the fucking time because so like I found, I found much more like obviously before I knew you, 
But like, right. I, I don't even know how the fuck I found, like, I don't know if it was TikTok or like, cause TikTok I, is most yeah. Like- yeah. So it was, it was, it was on TikTok. And then for whatever reason, then I, I joined the, uh, like the telegram channel, oh, and nice. I was like, eh, you know, like, is this, I didn't even know you're in there. Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah. and so you, you were the very first product that I ever actually like intentionally microdosed with. Oh, like I ever. Here. And so that was back in, I don't know, like October, November of last year or something like that. But like, that was the first time that I ever really like sat down and was like, okay, I'm, I'm intentionally going to do this. And like, I did like the Fatiman protocol. So it was taking it once every three days awesome. um, and everything. And it was just, it was just following much more ever since then. And, and, and I turned some of my friends on to you too. Oh, dope. And so it was just funny at psychedelic science when we were at yeah williams event and then i saw you i'm like holy shit that's the guy that i fucking you know first like his products is what i first kind of got got me into microdosing at least yeah Um, so uh let me ask you sorry to cut you off a little no you're good it's funny because i do a podcast also so i'm like i'm in interview mode a little bit also i'm like i want to ask a lot of questions to you too but what uh what psychedelic did you do that kind of i guess got you started on whatever journey you're on and and what was the reasoning for that so like it was cool at the psychedelic conference um for me it opened my eyes that there's so many different ways people got involved for me i was in a dark place and it opened up my eyes and that was great a lot of people are like that some people are uh addiction some people just really enjoy psychedelics and all of that and the creativity from it so like what got it you in and what was your like psychedelic that got you in and then the psychedelic of choice i guess yeah so so the fir- the first psychedelic i ever did was mushrooms but it was like just one of those experiences where like you know it was cool but like not eye opening by any means and i was not like oh man i need to like i need to explore this more um and that was just with friends so like i grew up very anti-drug like all of the, the the propaganda that i was fed as well as everything from my parents were like if you do drugs like you are bad like this is not a good thing you can't be a productive member of society and also do drugs so that was my where was that where'd you go i grew up in southern california oh, um wow. in a place That's called surprising uh, there yeah. like you know what i mean i don't know yeah. california you feel like everyone's kind of open to it a little you feel like every, yeah, it's again, like California is so goddamn big. Like you do not yeah. realize how big that is. And so there's all these little pockets, you know, it's very, very pocket heavy. So like I grew up around, I just want to say like relatively closed minded people, to be honest, like they, they, they have their way of living and that's their way of living. And like, that's it. Anything that veers outside of that in my little town that I grew up in Agora Hills, you know, there wasn't a lot of, Diff- different thoughts going on there. Um, but either way, so I got to college, then, you know, I had friends that obviously did drugs. And I'm like, well, they're fine. Like, they're, they're great people. I love them. So clearly, something's wrong here. So you know, I did mushrooms with one of my friends for the first time. And then it wasn't until about six months later, one of my other friends kind of just dosed me with, uh, with LSD, to be honest, like, I didn't know going into it that I was about to take LSD. He, what? he that's- had he no, just had not. liquid LSD and he's, and like, here's, it, it was a guy that's like, kind of just like, you know, he has different vitamins and kind of like elixirs and stuff to like help you. And, you know, so he, he just had this little liquid syringe and he's like, you know, like come over here. And then he dropped a couple drops on my tongue. I was like, what was that? He's like LSD. I was what? like, I've never done that before. What the fuck? Like what's, what's, what's about to happen? Yeah. He's like, he's like, oh man, you're gonna, you're gonna have a great time. And then he left to go to a concert. Like he, he just left <laughs> and left you by yourself. Pretty. I mean, I was, I was with other people, but like, yes, I was the only one tripping at that point. Wow. Um, and so I'm like, well, I guess I got to deal with this. And, uh, you know, that could have gone one of two ways. Like, you know, some people that would be absolutely fucking terrible. Like that's their worst nightmare. And I don't recommend anybody doing that for me. Luckily at the time I was open enough to just like, new experiences and i was in college so just put whatever the fuck you want into my body and i'll just handle it uh and i had like just an absolutely incredible night that was just (laughs) so eye-opening and i was so happy i just remember the whole time i'm like i am just overwhelmingly joyful and happy right now 
this is the greatest thing ever. And, you know, I, I even started to notice like just these thought patterns that I could actually change. Like, you yeah. know, I, I wasn't just stuck in sort of these ways. Like, I'm like, damn, why do I get mad at these things sometimes? Like, I don't have to do that. Yeah. And then I just didn't. And um, then once you think that way, it's wild. Cause when the trip ends, you're still, you're mm -hmm. opened up to thinking that way. And it yeah. lasts. It's exactly. Just, it's it, it, it lasts as long as you intentionally make it last. <laughs> as long right. as you go through that integration, which I did not know a single thing about. So it lasts for, you know, maybe a month or two or something like that before right. I'd eventually get back into like, not, not as strongly, but I, you know, I, I, I'd fall back into old patterns just cause that's how the brain works. Like it does what, what it knows, what's comfortable. Um, but <laughs> that experience you know was that what, how many years ago was that? Um, that was the beginning of my senior year. So that would have been 2018. 2018. Yeah. Nice. So I actually almost exactly five years ago. Honestly, it actually might have been almost five years to the day that oh, I did wow. LSD for the first time. Just looking at the date right now. That's um, awesome. It's around when that would have happened. So that actually be really cool. Now I'm now I'm really curious. I want to look back to see if that's true. But, um, but yeah, and then that year i just did i did so much lsd it was it was so much fun man. it was it was it was the best <laughs> that's hilarious and then uh, so that's is that your psychedelic of choice yeah i'd say i'd say it, it was my psychedelic of choice but interestingly enough my last trip that i had with lsd like i had i had an amazing time but it, it's almost like it kind of told me like i like I was kind of speaking with like the LSD energy or entity or whatever it is. And it kind of told me like hmm. there wasn't much more that LSD was going to teach me. Like if mm -hmm. I wanted to continue to learn more about myself and the universe, like LSD might not be able to really teach me much right now. So lately it's been, it's been mushrooms for sure. Nice. Um, but ayahuasca was the biggest teacher that I had that really spurred everything and, and kind of put everything into perspective. But oh um, wow, I didn't I didn't know yeah. you did that. That's um that's one I haven't done. That's uh that's a big one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that when was. Did, when did you do that? I did that September of last year. I went to uh, I went to Peru um, and did uh, so a six day a six day retreat. I did three ceremonies over the course of those six days, and yeah, that was just different unlike unlike anything else you'll ever do yeah. if, if if it's calling to you 10 out of 10 recommend going and doing it um, yeah i could i could talk about those experiences for literal days oh man we'll we'll have to schedule some days where you can talk about it yeah I'm, for I'm sure down to here because uh yeah that that one's intriguing but i think uh, iboga is really intriguing as well that's Same. one that i really talked about a lot um they're kind of all intriguing i kind of i want to try them all a little bit mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you ever done a, have you ever done two CB? No, I have not. Okay. I haven't either, but I just, I just got some and I'm oh, going wow. to do it at some point, uh, hopefully in the near future. That's um, a, that's a pretty, but I've heard uh, people have had really great experiences with that. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you get to go to a lot of the talks at the psychedelic conference? Cause it, it opened up my eyes, um, how much more there is that I wasn't even aware of, but Seems like there's a lot of these research chemicals like 2CB coming out kind of all of the time with varying, I guess, like effects and like ease of how to make it or how cost effective it is and all of that. But it's it's kind of exciting. It's like, hey, uh, I feel like there's a good chance they're going to discover the next LSD or something just as good mm -hmm. next 10, 20 years. That'd be amazing. Yeah. So... I, I didn't, unfortunately, like, so I was, I was volunteering at the conference. So like, I was basically like working six hours a day while I was there, which again, my, my volunteer job was, was really dope. I was literally just filming, uh, like content for them essentially, which yeah, is kind of what I would have been doing anyways. Um, but I was just, I was just interviewing people that were there, uh, which awesome. was really cool. But again, because I, I was out like kind of on the floors and roaming around trying to find people to interview. I don't get to go into the talks and just like sit there and do nothing. Yeah, so yeah. I got to go to some for sure. Um, I got to go to Aaron Rodgers, which was really the one that I really wanted to go to the most. Nice. But that yeah, that was, it was, that was fun, but no, but I didn't get to go to as much as, uh, as I wanted, but just from having the conversations with people, I noticed too, like how many different 
honestly just different psychedelics there are and how many different ways that people have gotten into this. Like it, it very much expanded my view and made me think I'm like, damn, like I thought I knew, you know, what I was talking about and <clears throat> knew psychedelics in general and maybe realize like, nope, I don't know shit. Nah, not at all. And then, uh, although too, I feel like it was a little bit, I think disheartening that, um, when you first do psychedelics, at least for me, I'm assuming probably for you and a lot of people with like the LSD, you're like, oh, wow, we're all connected. I feel good. You feel optimistic. You think we're all on the same page. And then when you go to a psychedelic conference, you'd assume, hey, everyone's kind of going to be on the same page. But as you get like, I guess, higher and higher into the whole industry, you realize there's a lot of politics, a lot of fighting and disagreements and like uh very not on the same page and you're like oh i guess uh when it comes down to it it looks like parts of this are going to be just like everything else uh i like to compare mushrooms to cannabis and like cannabis industry doesn't really seem too great right now it seems a lot of wall street and uh just product has not gotten as good. The price kind of went down, but it's just not as good product. The laws really don't make too much sense. And it's a, a handful of people who are making most of the money. And it kind of seems like m mushrooms and psychedelics might follow that path also, uh, which I guess sucks a little, but we'll keep on, I guess, fighting and working for it not to. Yeah, I... I felt the exact same sentiments when I was there too. Like getting, as I start to network with more people and meet more people, I realize how much, you know, politicking is still going on behind these closed doors. And, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it, it really does suck because like you said, like we want to all be on the same page. We really do. And like my, my page, what it looks like for me is like, how do we just, how do we just love each other? Like, how do we figure out, how do we all get along? Like, that's the main goal. How do we all love each other and get along and provide the most common good for people? Let's do that. And then let's work backwards. Like, that's the goal. Let's work towards that goal. Whereas that's not most people's goal. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. I, and, yeah. And it is complex. Like, it's it's easier said than done, I guess. But at the same time, some of the things uh, that they argue about or we all argue about just don't seem like things we need to be wasting time on. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. What what I do find different from the sort of mushroom community versus the cannabis is, is, you know, even before mushrooms are fully decriminalized or legalized, which they are doing in a lot of states. Um, but cannabis before all of that happened, didn't really have communities like Mushmore to actually help people get them. Like you all just kind of had like a dealer and you'd hit up your dealer for weed and like that was it. Whereas yeah. with mushrooms, there's a lot of these actual communities popping up in which people have signal chats, telegram chats, in which mm -hmm. they have places to go to actually then talk about these experiences. And so it doesn't feel as disconnected as what I think the cannabis industry is. And so that's interesting because it's all people like you that are creating these communities and the laws aren't really taking this into account. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. That's a great point. I, I, th I guess the internet is a big reason for that, that we're able to stay all connected. Because if there's no internet, I don't know how, it would, uh, how that would happen. But uh, you're a big part of it also, making it all stronger. And it's interesting. I, I have an optimistic view of the future. And then I guess a pessimistic view. And then a lot of views in the middle. And it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, I don't know. I think when I first started getting into all of this, it was it was very optimistic with no option for anything less. Yeah. And just as I've gotten more and more into it, I realized like, no, nah, it, it might not go the way I like. Uh, and like I bet I watched a documentary the other day of um, one of the LSD guys in the 70s. And in this interview, it sounded like he said a lot of the exact things I thought. He's like, I thought if everyone just did psychedelics, we'd all just get along and it'd be good. He's like, we we're really naive. Like, uh, real quick, the government can just shut it down if they want. And it's like, I hope that doesn't happen with us. There's a, in the media last week, there's a story of like mushrooms killing someone in Australia. And that's uh, a lot of people don't know if there's like all these types of mushrooms. That in the media just does not help the whole cause. 
uh, someone was tripping at a music festival and like shot someone. Yep. That does not help the cause. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I still don't think those aren't good things. I don't think that should really affect anything though with legalization because accidents happen with everything. They happen with cars every day. No mm -hmm. one seems to care. Happens uh, with sugar people die from, caffeine people die from. So it's like, yeah. let people have the option for mushrooms or yeah. for whatever, honestly. Yeah, for the for the ninety nine point nine nine percent of people that it's helping, there's that point oh oh one percent that it might not. But that goes back to because it's illegal, there's no proper education around this, which is also again why those communities are so important. Because like, I mean, before I bought anything from you, I was reading people's shit in the Telegram channel. Because also too, now that I have this page and everything, I get mm -hmm. followed by probably let's call it five to ten you know, mushroom tr psychedelic accounts that are trying to sell me mushrooms yeah. on a telegram channel every single fucking day. And there's a lot of, most of them are scammers. Yeah, exactly. Like, and so, you know, it, it is up to us to making sure that we are doing our research and like, not just looking at, Oh, look at this. Like, let me just go buy that. Um, yeah. So you're like, I, I, I made sure within the community, I'm like, okay, this, this does seem legitimate before I was comfortable enough to actually then purchase something. Um, yeah. I don't really know what the point that I was trying to make with that is, but like, you know, <laughs> oh, the, back to, back to, back to the education, because it's illegal, there's not proper education around it. And so when certain people do take psychedelics, like, yes, bad things can happen. Absolutely. But mm -hmm. that's the same with any substance. Yeah. Or, or with literally anything mm -hmm. like, uh, you can be dangerous with things that aren't even substances too, but definitely substances. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I personally feel like, legalization should be everyone should be allowed to grow you should be able to kind of like get as much as you want you should be able to i think in i think it was denver it might be oregon though the, the two places that it's like decriminalized or legalized first it was like a three thousand dollar uh three thousand dollars for like six hours in a session room yeah that, sound, that sounds insane and ridiculous but at the same time, I shouldn't talk negative about that. I didn't mean to, but like, that's not anything I'd be interested in. But that's also uh, not me to say that shouldn't be an option. That should be an option for someone. But it should also be an option that you could just buy it at the store and go home mm -hmm. and do it because that's just as beneficial for a lot of people who can't afford the $3,000 thing. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, there should be like every, every way that people do it or want to do it should be available. It shouldn't be just one way. This is how you have to heal. Yeah. Um, well, so it's, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up. So I actually, from the conference I met, um, I met this guy, Willie T who is the the third licensed um, facilitator in, in the state of Oregon. And he has his own place trips, Oregon. So that, you know, he, he was telling me it was, it's $3,500 for a session. Yeah. But he, I saw, I saw it. And yeah. uh, I, I used what I think you're about to say in yeah. uh I spoke at Michael Fest two weeks ago. I want to know. You're about, about to yeah, say yeah. he opened up my eyes completely, and I brought mm -hmm. that up because um, it's true. But, but you yeah. can say, but it. but what he said is like you know those sessions are not made for the person who's growing mushrooms. Like they're yeah. not made for that person. It's made for the people who have been anti drugs their whole life and maybe yeah. have anxiety, depression, whatever it is, are just looking for some other way to think. And there's no chance they would ever do it without a very, very well licensed in a regulated guideline, because that's just the way that their mind works. So uh, the thing I was about to say, actually, is a it was a little different, but it was in okay. the same point. He said, uh, cannabis, when it first became oh, yeah. legal, was like $500 ounces. Mm -hmm. And now you have markets in like Denver, Oregon, that they're like $10 ounces. Yeah. So he's like, it's the beginning, it's at 35, it won't stay uh, at $3,500 per session. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense, too. But I don't know, my opinion is a little bit like, if you give into some of these regulations to begin, it's going to be really hard to get out of them, to get out of them. Like I'd rather just start from the beginning and be like, no, uh, anyone can buy mushrooms if they want. Again, yeah. you can have your session for $3,500, but also actually scratch that, that $3,500 has to be under insurance. If mm -hmm. we're deeming this medicinal, then insurance should cover it. Like they cover everything else. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't add up that this is medicinal, but you can't pay. You you can't go through insurance with it. You have to just pay. You have to find a way to pay for it on your own. Uh, Yeah, pay cash. And you're limited, too, on how much you can get. It's like it all contradicts itself. And it's like, no, if there's a a $3,500 session, should be under insurance. Maybe buying it at the store um, without a practitioner, you don't get it covered by insurance. Mm -hmm. But you shouldn't just not have that option, my opinion. No, I mean that's a that's a really good point. You're you're, you're kind of opening my eyes up here too. Is is like just the sheer contradiction contradiction of the state saying yes, this is legal because and it's only being legalized by all these states, by the way, because it is deemed you having medical value, mm-hmm. and so that's why it's being legalized in the first place. Which, I, which by the way, is fucked that that's the reason why it needs to be legalized. It should simply be legalized because I should be allowed to put in my body what I want to put in my body. But exactly. that's that's a whole different story. It is being legalized for the reason that it has medical value. So if that is the case, why like insurance needs to be able to cover it. And you need to put laws in your state saying that you insurance providers need to cover this. Like this is not an option for you. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. That's what I think. And I think that's what we kind of like have to fight for and like have it on our side where we're willing to maybe eventually regress a little or give up some stuff. But it's like, no, to begin, people are allowed to take whatever they want. Uh, it's up to them. With education, the problem will probably go a lot, uh, maybe not go away, but it'll be a lot lower. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man, that is an interesting uh, interesting point. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to talk to you about MycoFest. That was, the, was that the first time that you had spoken at any sort of like major event like that? Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely about mushrooms. Um, I'm a teacher, so I feel like, or I was a teacher for the most part, but, um, I feel like speaking at like a lecture was always a big event for me. Speaking. <laughs> yeah. But, um, what's it called? This was definitely yeah, first time speaking about mushrooms. Uh, it was my third time at MycoFest, uh, but this time as like a speaker. So definitely a little bit different of an experience. So it was, mm-hmm. it was awesome. Yeah. How long, uh, how long did you speak for? Uh, they give you an hour. I had, um, I think I ended up going for about 30 minutes or so. Okay. Um, and mostly spoke about what we kind of just spoke, how like we need legalization to have just minimal regulation. It doesn't really make sense. Mm-hmm. And uh, my story of how I started much more, how I got into it. And then a little bit of like the science uh, project we're trying to do of um, get chromatography on the different variants and aggregate a bunch of trip reports or microdose reports then from that try and maybe to do some conclusions of like oh uh gandalf seems to make people act this way or mm. this dose of shakti seems to work best but this dose of pe seems to work de- best for other people yeah um, something like that it is interesting like the the research that needs to be done in microdosing like is so vast like there we know actually really nothing about it from like a a a clinical level it feels like Mm -hmm. other than the fact that there's all these reports of people that microdose report feeling a lot better yeah and so i have to take that for what it's worth but Mm -hmm. it's just kind of the you know the the left brain in me wants to know like well why yeah at the same time i just saw a meme a couple days ago or maybe i read an article and the person said like if things in nature or in these like uh, ancient cultures and stuff, a lot of ancient culture, or uh, I don't know how to say this, a lot of these indigenous cultures, people live a lot longer. Mm-hmm. And all these people who uh, live in nature and work with nature seem to be healthier and all that. So he, he basically said like, why do we need proof or yeah. science to uh, back that up if like we just know it works if you yeah. know it works, we can it i goes. can just look over there and see like yep that looks about right yeah exactly that works so it's like yeah science is cool and i love science i love being able to back it up but i'm also like yeah if uh if it makes a lot of people feel better that's pretty pretty conclusive to me yeah so what what did actually make you then want to start much more from your experience with microdosing during the pandemic uh, so I, I, wa- I was a professor at the time, um, and was still doing that. I had an Airbnb business that, you that time, uh, math. So math, okay. algebra at uh, temple university. Nice. And then I had an Airbnb business that basically went 
to like zero uh, real quick with COVID. So I had uh, like, I guess um, a gap in my life or something. I kind of was put off by a lot of business and just, um, and yeah, found it hard to like want to do something because a lot of it felt like tricking people. A lot of it, uh, people don't seem to be able to afford, let's say this and that. And it's like, if you're trying to just take their money to sell them something that maybe they can't afford, didn't feel right. I don't know. I felt really weird about it. And uh, then I, I listened to a book, Conscious Capitalism, by the founder of uh, Whole Foods, who was actually at the Psychedelic Conference also. He basically mentioned something about conscious capitalism, how you can kind of do stuff that if it's good for you, it's good for the environment, it's good for like your workers, your community, uh, then it, it actually isn't so bad as long as like you have these other factors of the environment, your community and all that, yeah. not just dollars. Question, um, did he write this book, and you might not know this, before or after he sold Whole Foods to Amazon? I think it was before, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not the most conscious there. No, but he, he has a good little way that, yeah. he, that he spun it, that is, like, oh, maybe it's not that bad. But um, yeah, so so that was kind of on my head. And then I guess um, I was microdosing, and the dosing wasn't really uh, the most consistent, I said. So I started making capsules. And when I made capsules, I'd end up having then a bunch extra because I'd make like 100 at a time. Yeah. And I'd uh, give it to friends and family or like people I think might be of use to it and all of that. And uh, the results were all insane. Like people were like, uh, I'm not depressed anymore. I'm more creative. One girl was like, I went outside for the first time in like two months or, or like two years. Uh, just a lot of wild feedback. And I was like, all right, this seems really, really useful and powerful. I've always been interested in uh, cannabis and like kind of involved with like at least friends um, cannabis companies. So um, it was like, this seems like something uh, that I definitely could do. I know how to do a little bit. And was like, let me try and give this to as many people as possible to, um, to I guess, heal people. And... I don't even know how we first got our, our first like customers. I feel like just like, uh, I don't even really know. It was on Instagram, maybe like DMing people, whatever. But out of the first 200, I'd say we had like three or four who literally told me, and I say like us, I have like uh, someone who helps me with some bit, but um, had like two or three people who told us that he they were like gonna commit suicide and basically just like didn't because they tried microdose and and that was like i think the real powerful thing that kicked us into saying like no we got to uh it's like how do i how do i stop doing this after hearing that yeah exactly something i i like mentioned before maybe in a video or the speech is like uh i'm a math professor but to me i'm risking one and right there in the first 200 saved three lives, or not me, but helped assist save three lives. Uh, so it's like three is more than one. And now at this point, we've uh, we've helped probably 6,000 people. And of the 6,000, we've had like a few dozen who now have said they were gonna kill themselves and all that. We've had hundreds uh, who've said they've, they've gotten off like SSRIs for the most part, but um, helped them with alcohol addictions, Suboxone, uh, heroin, fentanyl addictions, all of that. Um, so that feels re really good too. Maybe that's not saving a life, but that's still pretty amazing. Yeah. And then of the other 6,000, uh, there's a few thousand who are just probably having a great time. Um, <laughs> which like, I, yeah, yeah. We, don't, <laughs> we don't talk about that as much, unfortunately, because that's not as accepted. But it's like, uh, no, fuck that. We, uh, there's some, some of our customers aren't in it just for the healing. They're mm -hmm. in it to make their concert better. Uh, and, and I think it is a little bit healing because they're not drinking as much when they're doing that. Uh, and that's, that's saving your life in its own way. Mm -hmm. So, um, but there's a lot, there's definitely a lot of people who are just trying to be recreation. And I think that's completely okay. Uh, that just needs to be a little bit more monitored and, uh, those people have to really be careful. Yeah. That part isn't talked about nearly enough is just like, again, it, 
in general of just using any drug for recreation about how that's immediately just frowned upon, like for whatever reason, like, but like there are ways to consciously use drugs, whatever drug it is, you can consciously use drugs and not only can you, but like you should be allowed to, and it should be completely socially accepted to do that because most people are doing it anyways, but then they're trying to hide the fact that they're doing it from other people that are also doing it. Like it's this just weird mental game that we're just like trapping ourselves in this box here when like, we can't all just be honest and be like, Oh, you do drugs. I do drugs too. That's cool. Or like you do drugs. I don't, but that's cool that you do. Like, I don't give a shit. Like we feel like we have to have an opinion about everything and we just don't. Yeah, I, I agree. And then uh, to take that even further, though, like what I don't understand and I, I get maybe it's a little bit different, but no, to me, it kind of doesn't make sense. Is like there's a line of people outside coffee shops every day. Those are drug addicts. Like I yep. hate to say it, but if you're going to the coffee shop every day and when you can't go to the coffee shop, you're like, I can't go a day without coffee. I have that. That's addiction. Yep. But for yep. some reason, that's like a completely acceptable acceptable addiction uh if you drink even every friday and saturday not even every day Mm -hmm. but every weekend you're drinking it's kind of an addiction too Mm -hmm. and those substances literally kill you they ruin like relationships all that but for some reason like those are okay and that like just doesn't make sense to me at all uh yeah just it really confuses me yeah no i i i'm fully there with you it's just the the whole idea around drugs in general is just so fucking backwards yeah it's so backwards but yes as you were saying though so mushrooms have helped a lot of people get you know again get over addiction stop them from committing suicide and all this but the vast majority of people that do want these substances are just using them recreationally or they're microdosing to like help them with you know again just like living a better life like living a fuller like that's 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 the primary reason that i'm microdosing microdosing right now it's to it's to help you know enjoy my days more and to to help me focus and like that's fine too or you know you then have millions and millions and millions of americans who all have adhd medication to help them do the same thing but that's fine exactly no, and, and no matter what it is, it's okay. It doesn't have to be the way you do is the only way that's okay. Exactly. Um, and I like that you say that you do it, that, that you're microdosing now just to be better because that's something I've told people too is that a lot of like my friends, they support me, but they I don't know if they all like really understand what I'm doing or what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. And I've like, I've offered to some friends and some are like, oh, I'm cool. I'm like, I'm not depressed. And it's like, yo, it's, it, you don't have to be depressed to do it. Yeah. But like, <laughs> if you feel good, you might feel better. Like yeah. I, that, that's not a bad thing, but you could feel better. And like, it's why uh, so scared to like, just try. I don't know, but that's society just ingraining it into our heads that yeah. this is a bad thing. No one should try it. If, whatever. I, I, I am really curious. Like, are you scared at all about, like being caught given the fact that you are putting your face and your name into all of this? Definitely. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's not something I like to uh, think about too, too much. Um, But I know it's, it's obviously there. I think, um, but it's a calculated risk. Yeah. I I have in my head kind of um, once we hit a certain number of revenue that I'm probably going to relocate to like Oregon or Denver. Mm -hmm. Um, honestly though, so like part of my rationale for doing it is one, it's, it's a, it's a little mushroom pun. It's the moral thing to do. Moral is a type of mushrooms, but it also in Philly, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Philly at all. There's an area called Kensington. I'm probably three miles away from it. Um, and it's the opioid capital of the world and all day there's hundreds of people just shooting up selling it i've seen videos of cops buying it off of uh dealers and shooting up there it's like a madhouse it's absolutely insane and no one gets in trouble cops just watch it it's just like allowed so to me it's um it's like how can that go on 
and they don't care. And that's it. There's three people a day dying from opioids in Philadelphia. So it's like, how can they watch that go on? And that's the easiest thing ever to prosecute. Um, why would they care about someone who's online and not really like a uh, visible, yeah. not really hurting anyone? Mm -hmm. The biggest, uh, yeah, I think the biggest, um, one of the biggest things to be concerned about, unfortunately, too, is like, uh, is the money. That's like what a lot of law enforcement gets concerned about. But we operate as a business, we pay taxes. So I yeah. feel like that also helps too. We operate as a mushroom company. Um, and we just have, um, we have all the functionals and we happen to have another one too. Mm -hmm. But we're paying taxes. Hope, and then hopefully too, by the time we get to a size where that's more worrisome, Mm -hmm. um the landscape is a little bit different but yeah um sorry one last thing i got a lot of thoughts about that it's obviously something i think about yeah but also too uh i guess part of me uh did see the cannabis industry go a certain way and uh it was pretty unfortunate see I, i've been like a passionate cannabis user for 20 years now and i guess part of me was like i want to get um big enough in stature, have enough power or influence to try and not let other things go that way. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately for me, the best way uh, that I saw to do that is like to help as many people as possible. So I have like an army of people kind of down S to fight supporting. with. Yeah, exactly. Um, like people that are going to yeah. advocate for you. Yeah, ex I mean, we have I think at least 50, probably more veterans. I'm like, yo, those are some good people to have on your side. Uh, they know how to fight, like whether in battle, whatever, but uh, just, yeah, aggregate a big uh, army and then also aggregate some dollars so that you can um, actually like show up at the table and, and talk to the people who need to be talked to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 like just really, really interesting just thinking about from somebody who doesn't do what you do, obviously, but like knowing that like people are going to want these in, in some way, shape or form. Like there's, that's, that's never, ever going to go away. So then like mm -hmm. when you look at the supply chain of people who then actually like sell these drugs and what they do and the reason why they do it, like that to me is the most important thing. It's like, why are you doing this? Cause like, there are people that probably have communities just as big, if not bigger than yours that are just purely in this to like pump out as much as possible. And like, that's their only thing. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you do it in a conscious way, like this is to help people. And it's just kind of turned into this, like you very clearly have other ideas in mind. And again, this medicine has helped you in such a, you know, incredible and like, like, I'm trying to think of the right word here, but it's, it's helped you so deeply that you just want to give that to others. Like, I think there's something to be said for that, for taking that calculated risk, but people looking in could just be like, Oh, he's just a drug dealer. Yeah. I know. Uh, I, that's, that's certainly on my mind too. And, um, I, I guess I don't want to say I, I do things, um, because of that, but there are things I do that I think help that. Um, so we have like a monthly, uh, virtual breath work that we offer to our whole community. And then we have a monthly intention setting because uh, we think that like that's helping a lot of people who are trying to heal on their journey. And uh, it's something I think I can afford. But I also think it kind of helps di differentiate us than someone like um, Polka Dot or whatever, or One Up Bars, who are it seems like they're just selling mushrooms to try and make as much money as possible. Uh, and that's really it. And it's like, no, much more is not about that. There's people in our telegram group who've become like lifelong friends have met up in person uh so there's people who've it's like changed their lives from addiction but there's people who like have become a uh, family in there also and uh i love that but i also like to say too definitely i think i have good intentions i like to think so uh and definitely trying to help a lot of people but i've i've also told people too like um uh, a lot of my intention to help people is a little bit selfish. Like it one helps me feel better to help people. Mm -hmm. And then also a thing I think that's big with psychedelics, um, all psychedelics, but especially mushrooms is like, for me, you realize so quickly the connection 
with everyone to nature, but also if we're all part of nature, we're all part of each other. Uh, so it's like, I really feel like if I help this person who's hurt and this person and we help everyone who's hurt, it's only going to make our lives better because they're a part of us. And it's like, if we helped the people in Kensington who are all doing whatever, the whole city would do better. But mm -hmm. for some reason, we're like, oh, why would I help them? They're fucked up. They don't want help, this and that. And it's like, you help them because it's going to make your life better. Don't even yeah. think about that person. It's the, uh, it's, it's, the, it's the collective whole that it's actually, you know, healing. Like by, by, I was like, by healing yourself, that then gives you the capacity to then actually like help others and like provide that love and that sort of like that support for just people around you for the community like being right. selfish is not actually selfish like i mm -hmm. i'm the biggest advocate of like you need to be selfish like if you're trying to heal yourself like be selfish take time for yourself tell people no like if they truly love you they're not going to give a fuck but like if they're you know if they only like you because of these certain parts of yourself that maybe you actually fucking hate like let those people go like you know mm -hmm. let them let them, let them let them go away while you work on yourself and do that work but like it is it's important to be selfish while you're doing this while you're trying to heal yourself yep exactly and for some reason a lot of society has uh has it ingrained in people's heads that they can never be selfish and that sucks yeah it does it does suck i can i can go on this for a while but i'm actually gonna try to wrap this up so i do want to ask you i guess one last thing is there anything else that you just want to share before we officially wrap this up um next time let's do this in person because this yes. is so fun we gotta have uh i'm definitely back in denver uh i'll definitely be back before next year so cool. next time i'm there um it'd be awesome to hang out um i want to hear for our days about your ayahuasca experience uh chat more about just a little bit of everything and maybe uh game plan a little for the future but denver is definitely like the the heart of mushrooms right now it seems so I'll be there more and hopefully we can um, catch up uh, in person next time. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate everything you said, your perspective, everything you're doing for the community. And I wish you much love, brother. Much love. Thank you so much. I'll see you on TikTok. Thank you, everybody, for listening or watching. And thank you again to Jeremy for coming on the podcast and being a dope person. I always appreciate that. I appreciate authentic human connection. And this episode, I feel like was just full of that. I was just kind of geeking out the whole time. And that's always when I'm having the most fun. Uh, so to everybody else, thank you again. And I appreciate the support. If you ever have any feedback for me, shoot me an email, tripsittingblog at gmail.com or get in contact with me on any of the social medias. It's probably how you found me to begin with. Uh, and once again, I appreciate each and every one of you and I love you all and I will see you next episode.